the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got no. That's okay. That's all right. People are booing you him. Your freedoms. I saw this on Twitter. People are fucking booing him. I can only tolerate Trump speeches for so long, not because I get like offended listening to them or anything. It's more that they get really boring. Like they're all the same speech, you know? What are you gonna do? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. Thank you, wow. This is a big crowd, I'll tell you. Big. Big Lee, huge. This goes all the way back. I wish they'd show it because they just don't do that. You know, they don't like to. This goes all the way back. I just looked at it on television, but it's our television. We show it, but they don't show it. You know why? Because they're fake news, right? True. Hello, Alabama, and I'm thrilled to be back in your incredible, wonderful state that we won by a record number. We won this state. 1.25. 1.25. We also won a lot of other states by numbers that they don't tell you about. True. We did have a rigged election. Do we have it's terrible? True. Terrible. They and you look it. at what's going on now. You look at what's going on now and the border, but take a look at Afghanistan, what's happening. But I'm with thousands of proud, hardworking, incredible American patriots. With your help, we're going to elect. I love the, what does this guy's shirt say? Blacks for Trump? Does it actually say blacks for Trump? Oh, <laughs> It's got, I love this guy. He's out here. He's got beliefs and he's repping it. Okay. Where's the whites for Trump? Is it just black people? Where's the whites for Trump? Do they not like him? I've seen that guy so many fucking times. He's at every single one. Well, you know, they're like crowding all the minorities they can behind Trump. So the cameras pick it up and make it look like less of a Mayo crowd. Right? Like they do this every, t it's like, yeah, they're like. Our friend Mo Brooks to the U.S. Senate. We're going to fire Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden, and the radical left. Radical we're going to make America Joe great Biden. again. We have been making it so great. Now they're biting into that, but we're not going to let that happen. We can never let that happen. That's why, you know, I had the idea, all my ideas. Now, I can't do Trump on 1.25. It ruins his cadence. If there's anything the man's got going for him, it's his cadence, okay? And I can't, you can't, you can't fuss with that. It's very deliberate. Biden, you can speed it up 1.5, nobody cares. But with Trump, comic master, okay? You gotta respect it. Vosh, this is the guy, he's totally crazy. Oh, man. Man, he's got, man's got a whole article behind him. This should be my gig. I should show up behind, uh, behind Biden and have a big uh, whites for Biden t-shirt, you know? Like, I could be like the token minority, you know? In, the, in, a, in, a, in a country that's being overcome by uh by the great replacement i can be like the the white boy who's for biden you know they'll call me uh they'll call me an uncle timmy you know someday they're gonna tell me how to do things but i like the george Patton piece did you like that general Patton? i thought so because we're getting a little tired of the woke generals that we have right where they move our military <laughs> out before they move our civilians and before they move $83 billion worth of equipment. Let's move them out. And the Taliban looks and they say, I can't believe it. Based this Taliban. This could only happen to us. I can't believe it. The military left. They go. Hey, why was Biden's uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan such a pain in the ass? Why was it such a mess? Critical race theory. That's why. Okay? Because... You go to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and who's there? Robin D'Angelo, you know? And all the white generals, they're saying stuff like, you know, we gotta leave a contingent of troops behind the Kabul to secure the safe departure of American officials. And she says, no, that's just you whites performatively trying to overcompensate for the original sin of being born white. And look what happened, folks. Look what happened. Go in, we have 45,000 people there, Americans, anywhere from, I guess, 15. They have no idea how many. That's even worse. They say it could be 10. Oh, could also be 45. Trump's next rally to be held in notorious racist sun downtown in Alabama. Oh, my God. Do you think, like, for all the, the black and brown people in the crowd, they had to get, like, special protection or something? 
They, for, for Trump rallies, the way it works, okay, is that if you're black or brown, you have to find a white person to give you a badge of protection, okay? It's like a big shiny coin. And anytime you see, like, the, the guys coming at you, like the Republicans with the lynches and stuff, you're like, no, no, no. You hold it up and they're like, oh, okay. You know? Jesus. Whew. That ain't good. Wait. It's called Coleman, Alabama? Coleman. Kill man, Alabama? Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sure. And equipment like nobody has anywhere in the world, $83 billion. One year ago this month, in my nomination acceptance speech, which you remember, a lot of you were there. I see a lot of you that were there. I warned the entire country. Of I think, I think uh, having the same retinue of people who travel the country to continue to attend your nonstop rallies would actually be a bad thing. Would, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to be like, see new people every time? Or is it just the same crew of a thousand people who just follow Trump from state to state so they can show up again? Is, yeah, yeah, Grateful Dead, but racist. It's like a band that like, uh, that like, uh, jumped the shark in the 90s. And they just have the same like 50 something fans just travel across the state with them, you know? Of the disastrous consequences of a Biden presidency. I understood it. A lot it's of you over. understood it too. I said that Joe Biden would eliminate America's borders in the middle of a pandemic. He did. <laughs> I predicted that he would unleash a wave of violent crime that would turn our cities into. Wait, what? C SPAN. It's a 720 video. A nightmare video. of killing and bloodshed. Oh my you God. You look at these Democrat run cities Chicago, LA. Big cities, small cities. Wait, how cities. does Biden control Everyone these cities? Everyone run by a Democrat. New York, they don't prosecute people in New York. Only Republicans they prosecute. <laughs> you can you can just say anything. You can just say literally anything up there, man. Oh, dude. Oh, God, I'm so envious. There is not a human being on Earth who can get away with saying the shit that Trump... It's amazing, okay? Oh, it, it makes me blush. What power? They don't prosecute murderers and killers. They prosecute Republicans. It's uh, misconduct. It's called prosecutorial <laughs> misconduct. But I told you this was going to be happening. We stated it loud and clear. We said he would impose crippling shutdowns and restrictions. Okay, wait. Okay. It's six minutes in. So an in-person schooling. C-SPAN. C-SPAN. It's a 720p video. Come on. C-SPAN. This is, this is very... Very day one video service content right here. I'm gonna need you to chill out, okay? Stated it loud and clear. We said he Be would cool. impose crippling shutdowns and restrictions on in-person schooling and that these painful policies would nonetheless fail to stop the virus. He He's didn't so stop tired. the virus, you know? Is he sweating? They say, oh, he oh gets God, wonderful marks. He's so shiny. get good marks. He's done a terrible job, including on vaccinations, including on everything else. And now the virus is back. Yes, the virus is back. I'm shaking hands with everybody backstage. I say, well, I don't know. Is this a good thing or bad? What? You'll read about it in three or four days, maybe. Hopefully not. What? But I said that Biden would embolden America's enemies, and that's what he's done, and that the radical Democrat socialist agenda would set our nation on the road to economic ruin. You look at what's going on with inflation. Has anyone noticed that your gasoline is now at levels that you never thought you'd see again six months ago? Isn't, isn't inflation the same as it was under Trump towards the end of his term? Like, it's, it's the same, right? Yeah, it's the same. And the gas prices aren't... Do, I think a lot of people legitimately believe that, like, presidents have, like, giant levers in the Oval Office desk that they can, like, pull and push to make the economy do different things, you know? Like, the gas prices lever. You know what I mean? Like, Trump was abstainiously refusing to pull the gas price lever and make shit cost more, but Biden, shiftless Biden, weaselly little Biden, he went up there and he grabbed it, and with all his strength, he yanked it. Like, what, what did Biden do? What are we talking about right now? I'm pretty sure GDP growth is still continuing uh, just well. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is super dumb. Oh, hey, since this is going to be 
I don't even know if I can call it political analysis, but since this is going to be largely bereft of any substance, how about I show you something that actually is substantial? Super, super quick, okay? Super, super quick, okay? It is higher? Oh, what did, uh, what did it go up to? Let me see. Oh, we're at four. Oh, actually, it has gone up. Hold on. Does anyone know what's causing this? 4.25, 5.4, 5.4%. 12-month um, inflation rate uh, between July 2020 and July 2021. Does anyone know what's causing it to go up? It is apocalypse times. Uh, probably not that. Explaining economics has a video on this. Interesting. Just a moment. Explaining economics. You mean economics explained, I assume? That's the, um, how price inflation is happening today without anyone realizing shorts? Oh, 58 seconds. A lot of people, including myself, are very worried about inflation right now, particularly uh -huh. in the US. But what might be a more immediate problem is inflation's nasty little sidekick, shrinkflation. Companies, uh -huh. particularly those in the fast-moving consumer goods space, will reduce the size of their products slowly but surely over time while maintaining the same price. A 10-pack of instant ramen for $2 okay. becomes an 8-pack and then a 6-pack and then a 5-pack, all for the same $2. Now okay, that, that is bad. This doesn't seem to be on the subject that I was looking for right now, though. Inflation, 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 inflation. Hyperinflation is already here, you just haven't. Conclusion, let's go a single marble off your desk and sell it to a child playing on the street for some of their pocket money. You then take your marble money to the bank and proceed to pay off your 30-year mortgage 2,000 times over. Yes, of course, hyperinflation will cause other issues that still impact your day-to-day -day life, but ultimately, you now have a place to live for the price of a marble. This is a very extreme and over- I'm not getting the information that I want right now. All right, I don't care anymore. Want to see something actually cool? Just skim this article? Yes, skim me an article, thank you. Much better than a fucking YouTube video. Forbes, why inflation is rising. Increased money supply. Cool. The supply chain and the decreasing value of the dollar. What does any of this have to do with Biden? Does any of this have to do with Biden? It's due to the massive stimulus, the extra COVID unemployment, people not wanting to work. Yeah, but that's not, that stuff started under Trump. The additional spend, the additional Federal Reserve money printing was under Trump. The, um... The child tax credit, that went through, like, uh, the, the unemployment payments, like, that all, it's mostly due to supply chain issues. There are, like, 20,000 things that cause this. Huh. You know what? We'll look into it in the future. As a general rule, though, anybody who would blame something like this just on a president, like, there's a button they can press to change it, it's probably pretty fucking dumb, you know? And anyway, the thing that I actually wanted to show you, which is way cooler, by the way, uh, is this, uh, hold on, let me see. Yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah. This giant meta-analysis on immigration and crime, assessing a, a contentious issue. So I was provided this over email recently, which is, um, which is pretty cool. And you know how a lot of conservatives say that um, immigration causes more crime? Well, they did some studies. And <clears throat> what is the average immigration crime relationship across our sample of studies? Is it positive, negative, or null? Is it strong or weak? Overall, our narrative review reveals the most common outcome reported in prior studies is a null or non-significant association between immigration and crime. Indeed, 62% of effect size estimates reported in our sample size are not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. At the same time, although statistically significant effect size estimates are less common than null findings, it is noteworthy that the majority of the statistically significant results are negative suggesting the gr that greater immigration is associated with lower crime rates. In fact, our review indicates that significant negative effects are 2.5 times as common as significant positive effects. So in total, more data, more info. Oh my God, a Philosopher's Stone, thank you so much. We're already derailed enough, so I'll take a look at that in a second, but until then. So we had, we had $1.87 a gallon, and we had a thriving industry, energy independent. Nobody thought it would ever be energy independent. We didn't need the Middle East. What? We didn't need the Middle East. Never 180. And now you have over $5 in many cases, and it's going even here. It's going to be over $5 very soon. Like that quality. And I saw the other day before this whole thing with Afghanistan started, because right, right now, Nobody's talking even about energy, even about the horrible border condition that 
They're allowing millions of people to come into our country, people that we have no idea. But people aren't talking about that. They're talking about the disaster of Afghanistan. Not only have my predictions come 100 percent true, but it's uh -huh. even worse than any of us could have imagined uh -huh. in our worst nightmare. Nobody thought this. Boshka, like, holy fuck, you people are annoying. Jesus Christ. You saw the title of the study. You know you can literally just, like, Google it. And you'll be able to find it, right? You do realize you're capable of independently searching for stuff, that you don't access some kind of hidden, secret, behind-the-scenes Google that you don't have access to. There, there is the thing. I just linked it. Congratulations. Go, have fun. Please, go, learn. Jesus Christ. My God. kind of thing could happen. Biden has obliterated our border, given up our energy independence, caused soaring inflation. He failed totally on economic and policies. I mean, you look at what's going on. It's crazy. And the senators that voted for this $1.2 trillion bill, of which they call it infrastructure, but only 11 percent is infrastructure. Woke infrastructure. Where the hell are these people coming from? It's the roadmap. They call it the glide path. It's the roadmap to the Green New Deal, conceived and dedicated. Better quality video here. Uh, who's uh, hosting it? The Right Side Broadcasting Network. Yeah, sure. People are super chatting to this. Is this just like a random news network that allows super chats? I see they cover lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Look at these, look at these messages. Obamagate, no vax, boom, all glory to God, Kentucky for Trump, not my vaccine, end world communism. Man, truly is like staring into the abyss, isn't it? He failed totally on economic and policies. I mean, you look at what's going on. It's crazy. And the senators that voted for this $1.2 trillion bill, of which they call it infrastructure, but only 11% is infrastructure. I hate infrastructure. Boom. How? Where the hell are these people coming from? It's the roadmap. They call it the glide path. It's the roadmap to the Green New Deal. Conceived and dedicated wait, how, by... Wait, how? I'm live streaming. The, the bandwidth necessary to play a YouTube video at 1080p is a microscopic fraction of what's necessary to live stream it. Why are we, why are we freezing? It's probably because this live stream is overtaxed. YouTube isn't great at handling big live streams. By AOC, a real beauty. Go away. She's a real beauty. She knows more about the environment. I don't think she ever even took, did she ever take a course? She wasn't a good student. Did she ever take a course on the environment? Oh my goodness. Remember, remember when we first said you have 12 years to live, she said two years ago. That means you have, right now you're about nine and a half years. Somehow you're not worried about that, but you are worried about China. No, a lot of the people since she said that have died of COVID. So actually, if anything, she was too generous with their remaining lifespan. And Russia and other places, okay? All right. We rebuilt our military stronger, bigger, better than ever before. And now I see it being dissipated and being given. Our military is being given to the enemy. But I just want to point out, by the way, the enormous cope from Trump and all of his supporters when Trump talked about pulling out of Afghanistan and didn't do it because he's a fucking bitch pussy. OK, the reason he didn't do it is because he's a baby bitch beta fuck boy. Tr uh, uh, Biden, unironically, with the, the Chad Biden did it and took the optics hit. There was no way out of Afghanistan that wouldn't have fucking sucked. Biden did it with his gigantic centennial cojones. OK. Trump talked a big game and didn't do shit. Biden failed totally on the pandemic, and he's now overseeing the greatest what? foreign policy humiliation in the history of the United States of America. This is the greatest the humiliation whole? I've ever seen. Oh, my God. The whole United States America history? The, the whole 250 years. This is it? Not like Vietnam? Oh, wow. That's pretty bad. Biden's botched exit in Afghanistan is the most astonishing display of gross incompetence by a nation's leader, perhaps at any time that anybody's ever seen. Name another situation like this. 
Vietnam looks like a master class in strategy oh compared to Joe Biden's catastrophe. He's actually and it didn't have to happen. <laughs> All he had to do is leave the soldiers there until everything's out. Our citizens Never before have I seen a worse use of a military. Adolf Hitler, the Germans, they didn't even come close. Biden, by far the worst man ever born. Stalin would have dreamed of being this bad. <laughs> our weapons, then you bomb the hell out of the bases. We have five bases. And you say bye-bye. You say bye-bye. The scene of those big giant planes taking off with people hanging on the sides and falling off. There'll never be anything like that. That's worse than the helicopters. You remember the helicopters taking off the roofs? This blows it away. Not even what? a contest. This will go down. What? as one of the great military defeats of all time, and it did not have to happen that way. This you is also wanted not to a withdrawal. withdrawal. This what? was a total surrender. This surrender for no reason. They weren't asking. We had Wait, them. did he want to stay I in? I dealt with Abdul. He was the leader. I said, Abdul, anything happens, we are going to rain terror upon you. It will be a terrible thing. Don't this is proof, by the way, Biden, the real populist, Trump, the neocon, okay? Big baby Trump talked a big game about Afghanistan, but what does he want? He wants perma war. He wants forever war. The Chad Biden, however, committed to building back better, committed to the American people, pulled out of Afghanistan within less than a year in his first term. Touch our American citizens. Don't ever come to our country. Don't ever come to our country. And you're going to continue fighting your civil war. I can't do that. They've been fighting it for hundreds of years. That's what they do is they fight. And they're good fighters. But I had a good relationship other than that one statement. I said, after I said that, I said, now let's get down to business. And we had a conditions-based agreement. And they didn't meet the first two conditions. And we hit them hard. And then they met them. And then they had a couple of other conditions. Yeah. Never forget that the person who ended up taking Kabul is a person that Trump had released. Can you imagine if a Democrat president had let a terrorist go, and then later that terrorist had led the reconquest of a country that we had left? Like, like, can you fathom that? Nobody's even talking about that, by the way. Like, even mainstream news. Why would you not say this every minute of every hour of every day? Like, holy shit, you know? Yeah, they would call it treason. They would be calling for, like, the execution, you know? that they were ready to meet and then we had a rigged election and we had a new president and the new president came into office and he dropped to his knees and he said come on in and take everything that we have this is a disgraceful thing the most embarrassing thing that we've ever seen in this country there's never been an embarrassment and the nations of the world hey, here we go mala baradar afghan leader the Taliban returns after release from prison in 2018 at the request of former U.S. President Donald Trump's administration. And here he is somewhere in this blurry crowd, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. Wait, is it a video? Oh, it's just a video. Okay, I see. Yeah. Pretty wild stuff. World, both friend and foe are looking at us and saying, what the hell happened so quickly to the United States of America? They Actually, can't believe it. international support for America skyrocketed after Trump left. Like, it multiplied like the three times. The equipment that they've got is the most sophisticated military equipment in the world. He surrendered our air base. He surrendered our weapons. He surrendered our embassy. They spent a billion dollars building this ridiculous embassy. And he abandoned our great American citizens. They're overwrite. Wait. What? Boss See? Boss bad. Boss when did a billion dollars go towards the construction of an embassy? Biden's been in office for like seven months. What do you... It takes a while to build buildings. What is he talking about? Does he just mean that money was put into the embassy? That's the London embassy? Like, literally, what is he talking about? I have, I have no goddamn idea. Probably under Obama. So yeah, I have no idea what this has to do with Biden. Now, they have no idea. Remember this, the Taliban's tough. And they don't respect our country, and they don't respect our president. It's not good. 
They're over there now, and they don't know what's going to happen, our citizens. Joe Biden was going on vacation as Afghanistan was going to hell. Oh. oh, is this what he's talking about? The billion dollars, the London embassy? The one billion dollars for a glass cube? Oh my God, I hope she wasn't in here. She's going to agree with Trump. Okay, I'll admit that for a billion dollars, this sucks shit. Um, what does this have to do with Afghanistan? <laughs> oh my. Ugh. Why? Why? Look, I don't have anything against like modern or postmodern or brutalist architecture. Yeah, I'm not sold on this one at all. Also, maybe I'm growing more conservative with time, but I will say this. While I don't generally simp for like neoclassical architecture, I do think. It's nice for government buildings, you know, because governments have been around for hundreds or even thousands of years. So it feels like symbolically appropriate that a government building would be in, in a sort of like old like pillars and gargoyles in the rafters kind of style like that. I don't know. That just seems appropriate to me. The glass cube thing. This looks like a fancy office building or like where an evil cyberpunk tech corporation would build robot drones in or something. I don't know. And this is what you get when you have weakness in the White House. You can't have weakness in the White House. They have to respect your president. When I was president, we only had strength. Remember the 59 shots we took at Syria? What? 59 missiles, every single one of them hit their target from 700 miles away. And I was sitting with President Xi of China, you remember? Having chocolate cake at Mar-a-Lago, was wonderful cake. Xi. And when I said to him what we had just done, the missiles were launched, he looked at me and he goes, repeat. I didn't know he spoke English, actually. He said, repeat. I said, what did you just say, repeat? So he spoke a little more English than I thought, because he never said hello, but he said, repeat. And I said, we just shot 59 missiles in from ships very far away. Every one of them hit their target. It was an incredible display of talent and weapons. Is this, and wait, is, is this how you talk to world leaders? <laughs> Assuming this is a real conversation. This is because I do believe that Trump is autistic enough to embarrass himself like this. But how weird. Reason, the reason we did that is because we had to, because President Obama and Biden drew the red line in the sand and said, don't cross it, and they crossed it, and what? nothing happened. That's Wait, when what? Russia got involved. Russia went in, they said, oh, nothing's going to happen, so Russia got involved. Are we Other talking about Afghanistan involved. or Syria? That red line in the sand from President Obama yeah, that which was just absolutely, it just didn't matter. It was just words. That's a problem with a lot of politicians, actually, but not Mo. But it just... Does it matter? When he said, red line, don't ever cross it, and they crossed it, and nothing happened. But the 59 missiles were an incredible display under my administration. What? Did they private the live stream? Why does it have to be such a pain in the ass? This video has been removed by the uploader? Goddamn CIA. All right, back to C-SPAN. Such a... Indicated by... Just... Say something. And you knew it better than anybody, and Alabama knew it because nope. it just didn't matter. It was just words. That's a problem with a lot of politicians, actually, yep. but not Mo. But it just doesn't matter. Are you calling him autistic genuinely as an insult? All right. I, as a proud autist, okay, have the right to satirically impugn other people's lack of social awareness by calling them autistic, okay? I can only do it three times a day, but I can do it three times a day. Okay, just, just watch the videos. Just When he said, red line, don't ever cross it, and they crossed it, and nothing happened. But the 59 missiles were an incredible display. Under my administration, everyone in the world knew not to mess around with America. They knew that. Because of... 
Because you missile strike Syria? They understood our power. Hey, remember when uh, those the Russian like bounties in Afghanistan and Trump didn't do anything about it? Remember the uh, Russian cyber attacks on America and he didn't do anything about it? Remember the election meddling that he didn't do anything about it? Or not the election meddling, the the whole like uh, you know the whole Russia Gate damn thing. Wasn't the Russian bounty things actually not real? No, it, the um, I, I think there was a lot of confusion. I don't know. If, I don't think we know the totality of it. But Trump's response to it was literally like. Our intelligence agencies are telling us to be careful, but Russia said they didn't do it, so, like, whatever. Like, like that. That's really, like, pretty weird stuff, you know? And that I would not hesitate to use it in defense of our citizens, and the Taliban understood that maybe as well as anybody. This would never have happened if I was president. The Taliban resurgence began while he was president, remember? It was COVID-19 that allowed the Taliban, uh, well, I think that was part of the reason why they started to resurge, but the resurgence had already begun when uh, Biden was inaugurated. So actually, yeah. Our country was so respected. Everybody respected our country. China respected our country. We took in billions and billions of dollars in taxes and tariffs from China. They never gave us 10 cents. Remember all the subsidies you had to pay out to farmers because your tariffs were destroying our economy? Then, of course, the China virus came and it was a lot different. My attitude toward China changed. As I personally told the Taliban leader, if anyone ever double crossed the United States of America, it would be the last thing they. This quality is like unbearable. I'm. Guys, I'm sorry. Ever did. We said it loud and clear. And you knew it better than anybody, and Alabama knew it, because one thing, we won Alabama by a record, we won South Carolina by a record, and then they said, we lost Georgia? How the hell did that Bro. happen? That doesn't happen. That does. Get no, fucked. We know how that happened. We know how it happened. But under our leadership, America was respected again. Our people did a great job. I've been watching... Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, he did a great job, and he's going around spreading the word, and General Kellogg and others, they've been great. But they understood this would never, could never happen, could never happen. You never move the military first. You move the military last. We had total control militarily. They would have never come in. We could have kept them there for a long time, but 21 years, we want to bring them home. But we want to bring what? them home with dignity. You know, very soon, Literally, we're what going the to have... What the fuck is he even advocating for? I genuinely can't tell. Is he saying we shouldn't have pulled out at all? Or we should, uh, Earlier, he said he was complaining that the Taliban took the embassy. Of course they would have taken the embassy. What, like, I don't even know what this means. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Every fucking Trump speech doesn't mean anything. It's incredible. Of September 11th, and you're going to have, because of Biden, the Taliban flag flying over our embassy, flying over our facilities. What? What would you have done? So that was not even a possibility that a thing like that could happen. We decimated ISIS. You remember that? They ISIS. came back. They we came had a back. Great, great success. You, ab when you I abandoned the Kurds with Rojava, and they came back. You left them there to be shelled by Syria and by Turkey, and then ISIS started resurging. Took over. ISIS was all over the place, and in a short period of time, we killed its leader and founder, al Baghdadi. We eliminated the senior ranks of Al Qaeda, and we terminated the world's top terrorist in Soleimani, who killed a lot of American soldiers <laughs> and a lot of other people too. And they knew we weren't. Isn't it? Hey, isn't it fucking wild that Republicans will still talk about Donald Trump as if he was the anti-war candidate, but we're 20 minutes into the speech and he has legitimately done nothing but talk about how much more war he would have waged? bragging about the missile strikes on Syria, bragging about the attack on an Iraqi airport to kill an Iranian official and bring us nearly, like, to the brink of war, bragging about how, like, staying more in Afghanistan, how we would have fought the Taliban, bragging about bombing bases. Like, it's like, this whole thing, like, all he's doing is talking about how much more inclined towards war he is than Biden. Jesus Christ. But yeah, 
ISIS resurged towards the end of Trump's presidency. The most effective fighting force against them were the Rojavans. And when America pulled out and gave essentially leeway to um, Turkey and Syria to begin attacking them to reconquer that territory, um, they no longer had the resources or ability to really fight back against ISIS. COVID-19 made it worse, and then ISIS came back, and now they're in a pretty good position. ISIS map. I don't think they have any land at this point, guys. It's the black spots in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think they have territory outside the purview of this border, don't they? Eh. Hey, Dylan. ISIS has uh, seen a resurgence in the past year and a half, right? Yeah, there we go. All I need to hear. Playing games, they understood that right from the beginning. This proven record of America... No real territory, though? What does that mean? So they, like, kill and they raid, but they haven't been able to secure, like, actual land? Ah, oh, interesting. They're like the IRL version of, like, the, the like, bandits or, um, or, uh, uh, muggers or barbarians or whatever else in, like, 4X games, you know? Where they don't, like, conquer territory, they just, like, spawn enemies, you know? But shut up, just... Your strength laid the groundwork women, yeah. to safely and responsibly bring our troops back home. Nobody was gonna mess with us. And then this clown... They rigged the whole damn deal, and he got in office, and now, now they're taking advantage right. of us. And remember this, this isn't stopping. This is going to go on for a long time. This is going to go on for a long time. This isn't going away. This isn't like a three-day hit. It's going to go on for a long time. Taliban, great negotiators, tough fighters, great negotiators. You got 45,000 people. You got a lot of people also that deserve to be helped, and they're not going to let them be helped at all. This is going to go on for a long time. This is a great stain on the reputation of our country. Going into the Middle East was one of the most disastrous decisions that our country has ever been involved with. We've never had a decision. In my opinion, it was the worst decision that we've... Has Trump ever had an opinion on something being bad that wasn't also the worst thing to have ever happened? Like, has Trump ever negatively compared something to something else without one of the two points being compared being the literal worst type of its thing to have ever taken place? Ever had. It was quicksand. Quicksand. We should have gone in, knocked the hell out of it. You know, I met a general. His name was General Kane. I don't even know. Maybe he's not even on my side. Who the hell knows where these generals are? Somebody finds a better home. quality version of this video. When I get Post through with chat, this guy, Millie, I mean, how about CIA. Millie? Remember? Remember? Mm, critical race theory Remember general. Remember when I walked to the church, proudly walked to the church, that the protesters, they tried to burn it down, but I walked to the church. What? I'm sorry. Was there any evidence for the protesters trying to burn the church at Lafayette Square? Wasn't that church brick? What? Are... Those are those are peaceful protesters, and he sent the military in to gas them so he could get a photo op, and then he held the fucking Bible upside down. Jesus Christ! Literally just random accusations. It is a post-truth society. Oh, is this better? Okay, did it good. So, can you imagine these guys, Abdul and his friends? Nope, it's decent. Protesters out there, and Millie was walking with me. And the next day, the radical left media starts calling, you shouldn't have walked, you shouldn't have walked. Instead of saying, I'm proud to walk with my president, not because it's me, because of the office. Instead of saying that, he wanted to apologize for walking with the president of the United States. And I, said, and I said, this guy doesn't have what it takes. And uh, you're seeing that now because the worst decision by the way, the guy they're booing right now is the one who dissuaded Trump from c getting the military to just shoot peaceful protesters. According to Bender, when Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley and then Attorney General Bill Barr explained to Trump they couldn't, quote, just shoot, quote, uh, end quote, people, the president came up with an alternative suggestion. Well, shoot them in the leg, or maybe the foot, Trump reportedly said, but be hard on them. This is, this is real life. We're living real life right now. Just shoot them, Trump said on multiple occasions inside the Oval Office, according to, um, according to the excerpts. Crack their skulls, Trump also told his team that he wanted the military to go in and beat the fuck out of the civil rights protesters. Yeah, 
like I like I've said before, guys, and some people think that I'm hyperbolic when I say this, but the only thing that prevented the Trump administration from being like a legit fascist government was the strength of our institutions. If we had weaker institutions, there wouldn't like Trump, Mussolini. I really do think that functionally they're in the same category. It's not like people are born with the evil gene, but he's a far right fascist populist and he would have taken advantage of whatever he could have to do what he wanted to. And if we had weaker institutions, he could have done that. But he couldn't because we had stronger institutions. But every time he tries, the institutions will get weaker. Every time he appoints another Supreme Court justice, every time he appoints another federal circuit court judge, every time he weaken, the Republican Party weakens election law, they make it a little bit easier to win the next time. It's like that quote with Margaret Thatcher. We have to get lucky every time. He only has to get lucky once. Him or anyone in his party. I've ever seen. That's, again, why I put the patent. I just remembered it as I was coming over here. I said, get that clip quickly. The people of Alabama understand that clip. Do you think that... Let me ask you. Do you think that General Patton was woke? I don't think so. What do you think, Mike? Mike, was he woke? I don't think so. I don't think he was too woke. Oh, he was the quality. exact opposite. You know what woke means? It means you're a loser. Everything <laughs> woke. True. Everything woke. Base tr anti woke school true. Trump. Everything woke turns to shit, okay? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Look at Fucking this. tell him, dude. Fucking tell him. Absolutely. Woke more like poop. And they lose it. They lose it. This is how empty-headed Republicans are, okay? I'm sorry. This is like borderline dropped on head at birth level, okay? All the previous stuff, they kind of like titter and little clap for. Woke means poop. And they all lose their shit. They fucking, yeah! Woke means poop. And, and that, and that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. Oh my god! This is what they want! This is what they want! This is- they don't care about anything- you could- you could- the government could collapse. They could have nothing. They could be licking the sweat from the- the seats of park benches for nourishment. And as long as they could walk by the local electronics store and watch President Trump say critical race theory, more like critical shit theory, in the Oval Office, they, they'll lose their shit, they'll vote for him every day of their life they can, they'll, 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 they'll go to all of his rallies, that's all they need, okay? That's all they need! I got in a little trouble, I said that our... Women's soccer team was supposed to easily win, but they went woke, except for a few of them. I love those women that stood up and they saluted our flag. There were some of them. But the one with the purple hair, she... And what's with that He-Man remake? Uh, I swear they went woke with it. What? Are we gonna... T <laughs> it's YouTubers! It's 2016 YouTube, but it's the former president of the United States. She didn't play too well. She went woke. You can have her. He went woke. And they didn't do too well, unfortunately. We want them to do well, but they didn't. But it's true about woke. You just take a look. Yeah, wait, they lost to the Canadian team. Aren't Canadians more progressive than we are? On everything except First Nations issues. So wouldn't that mean the woker won? Everything goes bad. It's really, it's a shortcut to losing everything you have. They want to get rid of our great heroes and heroines. They want to get rid of our history, our culture. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do it. There we we're are. not going to do it. You know, when they were starting to rip down our staff. Dude, I just want to watch a speech where Trump reiterates every single anti-SJW talking point. If you vote for me, if you voted for me, there would have been at least one male gem in Steven Universe. Uh, she Ra's tits would have been so huge. She would have been so busty. She would have been, she would have been hourglass shaped, folks. You won't believe how busty She Ra would have been under me. 
What's what's a remake people get mad about? Give me a thing. What what do they get mad about? The I I can't the SJW stuff falls on my head. Like what's a piece of media? Come on. Ghostbusters. Yeah. The Ghostbusters remake. There wouldn't have been four women. There wouldn't have been three. There wouldn't have even been one. It would have been five men and they all would have been what suburban. Brie Larson would have been eating half-eaten garbage bin burgers out of a Shake Shack dumpster. Never would have even been a Captain Marvel. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. M Mr. Potato Head. Not only was Mr. Potato Head not going to be a gender sexual whatever, he would have had a giant potato dick. It wouldn't have been able to come off because we do not want to encourage children that you can take your genitals off. Dr. Seuss would have come back from the grave and written another book about the Chinaman and their pointy buck front teeth would have extended down the length of their chins. <laughs> okay, we need to stop. I'm having too much fun with this. Statues, and it started with people, Confederate, People, generals, some respected, some not, but they're taking down our culture and our heritage. And then it started with others, and then it went to Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee was a part of our history, and oh, then no. it went to. Then it went Came real close to saying a good guy there, I think. Went to Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson, now George Washington in San Francisco. They're taking the name of George Washington off schools. Can you believe it? Good, fuck them. We're not going to let this stuff go on. The hardest thing I had to do as president was signing letters to the families of soldiers who were killed in the Middle East. Often I called the parents, very often. Sometimes I went to Dover Air Force Base. That's where the bodies of the soldiers would come in, and I'd see them bringing a young man, young woman in a coffin, and I'd be with the parents, and I- But no young transgenders, we took care of that, didn't we, folks? I've told this story a couple of times. The parents would sometimes be unbelievable. That you would almost not understand. It was like, sir, it's so great to meet you. And they'd always tell stories about their child. Sir, my son could throw a football so long. He was a quarterback in high school. He was a quarterback in college. Sir, I think he could have been in the NFL. He was really good. He was so great. And we're waiting for the plane to come in. And sometimes they'd be talking about their daughter. Lots of daughters were killed coming out of the Middle East. My daughter was so beautiful, sir. She was so incredible. She was the greatest. And I'd say to the general and the colonel that ran Dover, the great people, we have great, by the way, we have great generals. We have great generals. The ones you see on television are not the ones that are great. We have great generals and we have great leaders and a great military that I rebuilt. I rebuilt it. It was exhausting. Man, that was a long and dark road, but we finally made it out at the end of that tunnel. Wow. Oh my God. I thought we'd never see the light at the end of that one. <laughs> But I say to the general and the colonel that ran over and they saw the bodies coming in many days of the week, I'd say, General. Nope, we're back in. It's amazing. The parents. We're back in. Seem so fine. They can handle it. No, oh they God, can't, we're sir. going back underground. I said, no, I just spent a half an hour talking to them. They're OK. I mean, they understand what happened. They're OK. No, they're not, sir. When that plane pulls up, sir, that big unbelievable, powerful, just like you saw three days ago with the bodies dropping off the sides. How desperate are people to leave when you're hanging, clinging to a Another plane tangent. that goes up thousands of feet and you eventually have to let go. How Another desperate tangent. is that? How sad and how desperate. But when that cargo plane pulled up and that door opened, the general said, sir, when that door opens and you had the most beautiful, young people carrying a coffin or a number of coffins off of the plane. Sir, when that happens, you'll see the parents are not okay. So I was talking to people. I can't, I, I'm literally fucking bleeding brain matter. Holy shit. I can't keep doing this. The town isn't the only thing sundowning here. Oh my God. 
can somebody like throw a rock at him so his brain resets and he goes back to whatever the fuck he was talking about before? Holy shit! I can't believe this guy was the president. I can't believe. I can't believe it. The the it is easier. The standards for being the president of the United States are lower than being a line worker at a fucking Amazon uh, shipping warehouse by far. Okay, if you came into the Amazon shipping warehouse looking for a job with Trump levels of cognitive awareness, not you. Not only would you not get the job, you would probably die somewhere in between the front door and the manager's office inside. You would probably wander onto like a treadmill, and he would just start like talking. He'd like lay on it on his belly and just start like talking into the treadmill as it carried him off to his death. That seemed to be fine. I was amazed at their strength. And 10 minutes later, I watched that same mother and that same father screaming, screaming, running to the coffin as it was being taken off, breaking security lines. You couldn't stop them. I've never seen anything like it. And for what? And for what? And then you have a man who just retreats and gives up. What? And it's a Wait, he retreated to save Americans' lives. Wait, what? Wait, he... You were criticizing him for pulling out his soldiers too soon. You were saying he should have left them there so that they could have secured further passage for the remaining people, but your way would have led to more dead. What are we talking about? Disgrace. It's a disgrace to our country. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to everybody. The, the most, the most incredible, the most incredible people. But it was a, it's a very, it's a very, that what? was the saddest thing, seeing that Dover, you go to Dover. You what? go also to Walter Reed Medical Center, incredible doctors, I will tell you this, in, most incredible doctors, and you see the kind of horrific injuries, and you see the parents, the wife, the husband standing and looking over the body of somebody that was just absolutely shattered. In some cases, no legs. In one case, I'll never forget, no legs, no arm, and then the other arm a half, and said to me, sir, I got lucky. I was able to save a half an arm. And I'm looking and I'm saying, we can never let this happen again. It was a terrible, terrible thing that happened. It was such a horrific mistake. But these people represent our nation. We're rapidly crossing into the territory where making fun of him begins to become ableist. Where are we? Where are we? What are we doing? I... This is... I, and, and by the way, I mean, I've watched enough Trump speeches to know. It's... I mean, you see the ones that I watch, and I've watched more off-stream. I think this might actually be the least coherent one yet. I actually do believe that. That's not hyperbole. I don't have the best memory. But I actually think this might be the most incoherent I've ever seen him. Which, I mean, he's old and time moves linearly forward, so... ...his people, our nation, has ever had. Ever had. They don't know what they're clapping for, but hell, they don't know half the time anyway. Let's... That, that's what gets the applause? All that? That rambling, incoherent nothing? Thank but you. Literally, the last thing he said was the guy with no legs and one missing arm and a half arm. That was like the last thing he said. That's what they're clapping on? Like that whole tangent? Then he ends with like, yeah, I saw a dude in the hospital. He looked fucked up. And we're getting this? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we had a deal where we were going to get out with great honor and they weren't gonna play games. And we had to meld it in with the government, but I've never been a big fan of Ghani. I always said he was a total crook. I've said it for years. It turned out he was a crook. He was a crook and he left, he fled. He fled with a lot of cash. What we've done, how we got into that mess is just amazing, but we could have gotten out with honor and we should have gotten out with honor. And instead we got out with the exact opposite of honor. Since my administration began negotiating a peace deal last year, somebody said, oh, he's dealing with the Taliban. Who the hell else am I supposed to deal with? <laughs> deal with the people that ran or the people that were highly paid. You know, we paid the soldiers. They were among the highest paid soldiers in the world. I remember a certain highly overrated general came to my office. Sir, they're fighting for their lives. They're fighting for their country. I said, no, general. 
They're paid more than any soldier in the world. And when that payment stops, they're gone. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. But since my administration began the negotiations on the peace deal last year. Guy, I know it's hard to keep up. He's referring to the Afghan soldiers here. Also, um, it's very funny that he's saying all this in hindsight when he continued all of the policies in Afghanistan, all of the uh, failed nation building, everything that he's complaining about right now, he did. He did all of it during his entire presidency. He bitched about it. He did nothing about it. Biden did the only thing we really can do, which is exit the situation completely, like a Chad with his big Biden balls. Not a single American service member has been killed in combat in Afghanistan. It's over 18 months now, 18 months. And you know why that is? Not because the Taliban aren't great fighters, because they are great fighters. All you have to do is ask Russia, which used to be called the Soviet Union. And what? because of Afghanistan, it's now Russia much smaller version of what it was because of Afghanistan. They went bust spending so many years and so much money and not winning in Afghanistan. Is that true that we haven't had a single service personnel killed in the past 18 months in Afghanistan? That seems like uh, the fact that he used the term service personnel suggests to me that we might be doing a little bit of a statistics fuckery here. <clears throat> Let me see. Can I get uh, American deaths in Afghanistan each year? I just want to say, blocked by the stupid news website. That was part of the deal when uh, Trump had 5,000 prisoners released. Yeah, I know there was a temporary peace agreement. I was just, I thought I remembered hearing a news story about, um, about American soldiers dying in Afghanistan sometime within the past six months. Um, I can't find a timeline for this. Why is Google being so unhelpful? Let me see. Oh, no, this one that's on uh, Wikipedia stops counting after uh, April. Okay, yeah, maybe that is the case. Other folks died, sure, but... Oh, we found another live stream? Please, God, get me out of here. What are we, 29 minutes in? In three months, in nine months, said the worst problem we have is North Korea. Kim Jong-un hangs out in I'm standing there. Somebody walking up. Sir, the soldiers have left Afghanistan. Lawsuits, we built it at a rapid pace. What do you think? Now I hear they're going back in. Not so. The administration began the negotiations on the peace deal last year. Not a single American service member there has been killed in combat in Afghanistan. It's over 18 months now. 18 months. And you know why that is? Not because the Taliban aren't great fighters, because they are great fighters. All you have to do is ask Russia, which used to be called the Soviet Union. And because of Afghanistan, it's now Russia, much smaller version of what it was. Because of Afghanistan, they went bust, spending so many years and so much money and not winning. But in Biden Afghanistan. pulled out. What is that credit? That money they spent. All of the lives they lost, same thing. But all you have to do is ask Russia, what do you think? Now I hear they're going back in, not so fast. Everybody that's gone well, so in The Soviet hasn't Union been wasn't so good. fighting the Taliban. And you know what? We have to go in, and we should go in when it's right. And we now may have to be forced to go in because this person that is running our country made a horrific decision of taking all of our powerful military out, we may be forced to go in. And we may not be forced, but we may be forced to go in. And if Dude, you're not prepared to go hawk. in, you're never going to see those 45,000 people again. That I can tell you. If they don't think you're prepared to go in, you're never going to see again, whether it's 10 or 45,000 people. You'll never see them again. All Joe Biden had to do was follow our plan. It's like the border. All he had to do was go to the beach. He didn't have to do anything. We had the tightest, most secure border. We built almost 500 miles of wall. He could have finished it in one month. Instead, he's paying billions of dollars not to finish it. 
And I would have had it much What? earlier, but I got sued by the Democrats in Congress so much. Took two and a half years for me to win the lawsuits. After we won all the lawsuits, we built it at a rapid pace. It was just about finished. Helped us great. We set records, records at the border. All he had to do was go to the beach. Records? Same thing here. All he had to do is follow our plan. Now, it was conditional. So if they don't follow it, then we start blasting them again. They didn't want to be blasted. They were tired of being blasted. They were tired. You know, they're tough. Everybody's tough. But you know what? We're tougher. He what just said it. What the fuck are we talking about? But nobody would know it. Nobody would know it. When you look at what's happening, nobody would know it. But we're tougher. This is the most incoherent war hawking I have ever... I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm unraveling a string puzzle. You know? Like, as he's, he's, he's like spinning a yarn, literally. And I have to like unravel it. He, but what, this is incredibly war hawky. The constant adulation of American military strength, saying we should have stayed in longer, saying we should have bombed the fuck out of that. Like, I can't believe there were people who thought that Donald Trump was less of a warmonger than um, Hillary Clinton, okay? Hillary Clinton is a slime mold that was, that was, that grew from the, the caverns beneath DC and probably would have just done status quo shit, okay? Um, I certainly don't think she would have fucking struck Soleimani. And I definitely don't think. She would have been giving these 30-minute fucking war hawk speeches. I'd like to explain that to Abdul and to everybody else who are much tougher. Please remember that. It's hard for them to understand that now after watching this. Think of that. The soldiers have left. I could just see this. The leadership of the Taliban standing there. Somebody walking up. Sir, the soul. Oh yeah, and the MOAB that they dropped, that he dropped in Afghanistan. Not to mention the fact that he tripled Obama's drone strike numbers. Why do we remember Obama as the drone strike president when Donald Trump? Oh Jesus Christ! Fuck you. Whatever you can look up the numbers if you want. Soldiers have left Afghanistan. He goes, what? The soldiers have left, and they've left all of their citizens behind. And they've left $83 billion dollars worth of equipment behind, including brand new Apache helicopters, thousands of Humvee vehicles with armor guard, equipment that nobody has ever even seen before. It was so sophisticated and good. What? So can you imagine these guys, Abdul and his friends, sitting there, that the United States soldiers, our military, has left? They walked in, they walked in, and they took everything. It's crazy. It's He's crazy. Like I've never times. seen. I've never seen anything so stupid in my life. Somebody said, "Don't say it, sir. It's not good." I asked yesterday. I was with a group of people, and there was a five-year-old child, and I explained the situation to the five-year-old child. They said, "No, you shouldn't do that, sir, because." No, you shouldn't do that, sir. His uh, his uh, details said to him as he approached the five-year-old. You should stay away from kids. After the whole Epstein thing, let's not avoid any. Let's avoid trouble. The press won't like it. I said that's okay. Oh, hey! Whatever. The press doesn't like anything I do. They actually do like it, but they'll never say it. Okay. But What? I, I asked the child. All these catty bitches at MSNBC secretly love me. They wish they could report good on me, but they can't. So what would you do after describing? Would you leave the military until everything's out, including the civilians and all of that incredible military equipment? Or would you have the military go out first? Sir, I'd leave the military in. He was five. He said, I'd leave the military in. Get everything out first. I said, thank you very much. But they didn't want- This is actually very smart. He's appealing to the chain email and shares um, highly artifacted Facebook screens cap um, demographic. You know, like those like Christian moms who will share things like the woman took abortion pills, but then later that didn't work and the baby was born and in its fist, it clutched the two pills and its head turned towards the mother 
and said, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, mother. And then the doctor clapped, and then the nurse clapped, and then the windows shattered inward as all the other patients from the hospital ran in so they could also clap. That stuff. Hey, if you have evangelical family, you've seen these copy pastas, right? Right? You've seen them, right? This is, yeah, this is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want me to tell that story? They thought it was not an appropriate story, but it's true. This is what? a five year old kid, five or six year old kid. And this is what we're stuck with. But when Biden took office, he foolishly tore up our really good plan. Again, <laughs> not a plan, it's condition. I can't fucking do this, man. Our, our really good plan. We had a, we had a really good plan, you know? Uh, he left it in the, one of the drawers in the Oval Office desk. It's written in crayon on a napkin. And it says, get the troops out. Winky face. We do this, we do this, we do this. If you don't do these things, we're not going to do it. And then we start dropping bombs all over the place. And they say, you know what? We're going to do it. We've decided to do it. No, we had a good understanding. They always hate it. Remember when I came in, Obama said, the worst problem we have is North Korea, Kim Jong-un. I said, what's the problem? He said, I think you're going to go to war with North Korea. I said, have you ever called him? No. Actually, he called him 14 times and was not responded to. But he told me no, but that wasn't truthful. I said, it would be good to talk to him, wouldn't you? You know, rather than nuclear war, wouldn't it be nice? Anyway, through a series of events i did talk to him and it was nasty at the beginning remember do you think it might say something that kim wouldn't talk to obama but would talk to you i mean assuming any of this is true which well, he lies about everything doesn't matter but like does that maybe say something he said we have a red button on my desk and i said i have a much bigger <laughs> red button and my this is what republicans want and yours doesn't. they just want stupid war and hawk military anyway, it was very nasty, dick and then all of a That's sudden it. It became this is by the way this is what i mean about like the left and the right really don't need to work together to make the country better because the right doesn't know how to make the country better they don't know what they want okay you could you could go up to a republican and be like here's a button okay this button will fix our healthcare system give everyone good jobs, it'll rebuild the unions, it'll make our country strong, it'll make people happy, it'll improve our education numbers, everything. But you have to let immigrants in, and also trans people have to use the bathrooms of their choosing, not just ones associated with the birth sex. And they would not press that button. They wouldn't press that button. They wouldn't do it. Legitimately. The reason why they clapped harder, they have, they have clapped harder in this speech for woke equals shit, than they did for America, America's troops, our warfare, or Donald Trump himself. Nothing did it quite like woke equals shit. They have no fucking right to ever speak on anything about improving the country because they don't care about improving the country, okay? I know they're victims of this ideology, but holy fuck, okay? Like, so, so are like Jonestown's cultists, okay? But I wouldn't be going to them for policy advice. Jesus, fuck. It became a love fest. It became great, right? And I went to North Korea, went to South Korea, went across the line. We got along great. There was no nuclear catastrophe. But you got to be careful because he does not respect Joe Biden and he does not respect any longer America. But I said, it's good to speak to people. I stopped the pipeline in Russia. I stopped it. Nobody's ever been tougher to Russia, but I got along great with President Putin. We had a great relationship. He said, you're killing me with this pipeline. I said, look. Not right. Germany shouldn't have been doing that. You know, the European Union takes tremendous advantage of us. Almost as bad economically as China. People say, oh, that's a terrible thing to say. I say, really? How many Chevrolets are in Beijing right now? Maybe none, okay? They won't take our cars. They won't take our farm product. They won't take anything. And I was hitting them hard. And then the China virus came, and it was a terrible period of time. But we did the greatest job. And because the base was so strong, what we did was so strong. Our country is doing well. It's going to be blown now with all the inflation and everything else that's taking place. But we built such a strong foundation that our country is doing great, and other countries are doing horribly, horribly. Remember, they used to use anything to hit us 
When we got hit, I closed it to China, closed it to Europe, anything to hit us. But they'd say, in South Korea, they're doing so well. South Korea is being decimated right now. India is doing so well. India is being decimated right now. We did a great job on that. The ventilators, the equipment that we got, the cupboards were all bare. Everything that we did. And then we developed a vaccine, three vaccines in three months. Oh, no. In nine months. And actually, I'll tell you, it was three days less, three days less than nine months. And it's great. And you know what? I believe totally in your freedoms. I do. You got to do what you have to do. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got no, that's OK. That's all right. People are booing you him. your freedoms. I saw this on Twitter. People are fucking booing him. But I happen to take the vaccine. If it doesn't work, you'll be the first to know. OK. I'll call up Alabama and say, hey, you know what? But it is working. But uh, you do have your freedoms. You have to keep, you have to maintain that. You have to maintain that. And you got to get your kids back to school. And the How long do you think it's going to be before they throw Trump under the bus too? Republicans are terrified of their voter base, you know? Like, eventually the mainline Republican voter position is going to be that, like, vaccines have liquid Satan in them. And when Trump continues to advocate people get vaccinated, do you think they're going to be like, oh, he's fallen to the deep state too? Mask issue is interesting because Fauci said masks are bad and now he's a radical masker. Now he wants you to wear 15 different masks at one time. I don't know. He also told me he was a great athlete. Then I saw him throw out a pitch at the baseball. <laughs> I used to be a great athlete, sir. You did? Really? Oh, that's good. Then I watched him on television. That's not an athlete. The ball almost went to first base, didn't it? Hypers if you're a radical master. The issue here is not about whether to leave Afghanistan. The issue is Joe Biden's staggering incompetence and gross negligence. He doesn't know where the hell he is. You think he's running the government? He's not running the government. Creating the greatest strategic humiliation that we've ever seen as a country. And it was something that we should have stopped and the general should have done something. They should have done something. They should have talked to him and said, look, commander in chief, but you just couldn't have done that. If he had va evacuated, if he just moved the people out, he should have done it and he should have done it first. He had to have done it first. You know, sometimes in life decisions are made. And when those decisions are made, if they're bad decisions, you've got to get away from them and you've got to get away from them fast. And if you don't get away from them, you're not going to have a country anymore. You know, I said about elections, if we don't have great elections, if we don't have borders, if we don't have the things that are being taken away what from us, we we're not going to have a country anymore. And certainly we're not going to have a respected country anymore. How are we in a position where Joe fucking Biden comes off like the relatively coherent like option here? You know, with me and all oh, my God, how long does this go? Oh my God, it was a two hour speech? I can't, I can't do Trump for two hours. I can't. Office the Taliban would not have ever dreamt of capturing our airfield or parading around with our American weapons. Did you see all those guns they have? Who recognized those guns? Because they're the same guns you had, we made them. There would have been no emergency embassy evacuation and no taking down of our flag. They took down our flag. Okay. <clears throat> I think we need, to, we need to hope, we need to believe that if we skip forward just a little bit, just a, li a little bit, okay, that his brain will have sort of clunked into another set of talking points, okay? We, we need to see, okay? I'm going to see 10 minutes from now. Is it, is there, is there anything? Is there anything at all? That, and they hear it, they're genius, it's genius. When people heard that, and then they saw the results, because there was at games, it was happening, they never came, they stopped. Remember at the beginning with the caravans? We ended the caravans, but now the caravans are back at a level. Remember? Right before the 2018 primaries, the massive caravan that was coming from South America that Trump illegally deployed borders to the uh, soldiers to the southern border to stop. And then collectively with their psychic energy, 
all the soldiers at the border made the caravan stop existing and mysteriously disappear without ever hitting our border. Remember that? Remember how, thank, thank God for Trump and thank God for our troops, okay? For the fucking psychic Geller field they projected across the, the, the entirety of, I guess, Central America to, to, to intercept and absorb the energy from the caravan, okay? Oh my God. All that nobody's ever seen bigger, stronger, more powerful to disgrace. <laughs> no, nobody has ever seen more powerful witches and wizards that we deployed there at the border. Uh, we, they, their combined magics and arcane rituals were more than enough to banish the caravans to the Shadow Realm, which is why you never saw them at our border. Now the radical left Democrats have surrendered our sovereignty to the coyotes and drug cartels, child smugglers, human traffickers, and they usually traffic in women. Biden stopped wall construction, instituted nationwide catch and release, wanted it back, and invited the entire world to make a mad dash for the USA. When he said, come, you're welcome. I don't know if he knew. I, does he? Do people think this is a good thing, what happened? Yeah. They're destroying our country. Yeah. They're destroying. Thanks. Last month alone, more Border immigrants. Patrol, who we love, apprehended a mind-boggling 210,000 illegal border crosses. You can multiply that times six, seven, eight. Guys, not every clap is a soy clap, okay? That was a yep clap, all right? You have to, you have to mix it up. That was a yep clap. Eight or nine of the people that come in without go. getting caught. They say you can use numbers like that. Record numbers are getting away and historic numbers are coming from outside Mexico and Central America from every corner all over the world. A lot of them coming in from the Middle East. It is technically true that we've seen an uptick <clears throat> in the immigrants coming from the South. Um, in large part because Biden has ended the illegal and inhumane treatment of asylum seekers that Trump engaged in. I think that's cool. The only issue is the COVID thing, but we can fix that by um, having uh, no questions asked, vaccination uh, stations, COVID testing um, near and across the border to make sure that the impact, uh, you know, virus-wise is minimal. Um, it's doable. It's difficult, but it's doable. At this rate, millions of illegal aliens will cross our border just this year alone. Millions, millions of people. Many of these people are hardened criminals, murderers. Again, think of this. Just think of the statement. They are emptying their jails into the United States. Think of really? That. A lot of people don't know what that means. They are the toughest, meanest jails. They're emptying them into the United States. This massive... It's just, it's just, they just have a bunch of fence posts that line the exit from their maximum security prisons right up to the northern border of Mexico. What is he talking about? Emptying their jails into the United States? Of overcrowding on our border is a super spreader disaster that will bring new variants into our nation. And honestly... Wait! So are unvaccinated people a threat to this country? Or is it only when they're not white? <laughs> what are we? Far worse than variants, far worse. MS-13 is being replenished to levels never seen before. I brought MS-13 through ICE and Border Patrol out by the thousands, thousands. We were going into towns in Long Island and these- Guys, I have an honest question for you. I have an honest question and I could look like a fool asking this because I genuinely don't know the answer, but has MS-13 ever done, like, fucking anything worthy of constant presidential denunciation? I, it, it feels like MS-13 is, like, the way fucking Trump talks about it, and Republicans talk about it, like, they're, like it's, like, basically a micronation, like, brown ISIS. It's constantly, like, invading the U.S., and I'm pretty sure it's just a gang. I mean, I know they're, like, it's a bad gang. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying, like, it just seems a bit odd. These were brave warriors, like... Law enforcement is, we have so much respect, and they'd go right into what they call a nest of a lot of these gang members, and they'd start fighting. All these guys that I know, my friends in the first row, I know every one of them very well. Not one of them would do this job. And if they did, they'd be knocked out in about two seconds. They wouldn't do it well.
They wouldn't want to do it. ICE is — these are brilliant, great, tough, strong, but more important than anything, patriotic people. They would go into these towns, and they would get these hardened criminals that are loaded up with weapons, and they would get them the hell out of our country. It's amazing what they did for us. And now they're being right. treated horribly by this administration. Joe Biden has functionally abandoned ICE, shut God, down interior enforcement, and turned our God, nation into a giant sanctuary for dangerous criminals. We have criminals coming in this country. Nobody knows what how bad it's going to be. Watch. That's another All right. Okay. So he's on the immigration thing. Does everyone remember earlier? Everyone remember earlier? Uh, we took a look at a little meta analysis showing that immigration leads to lower crime levels or at the very least, no effect on crime levels. Okay. We remember. Okay, cool. 10 minutes. Is to comply with an official subpoena to provide images of the envelopes, which were Oh no. This would prove whether they indeed counted ballots. Oh my god. With no signatures at all. Many of the ballots uh. weren't signed. They were just thrown in there. Finally, a recent trend analysis of all 50 states based on population growth, voter history, and voter registration data by one of the most respected people in that industry. Somebody industry. So respected, military person. Captain Military person. Seth Cashel found over 8 million excess Biden votes. In other words, How? he had 8 million more votes than he's supposed to have. How? What? How? Well, if you type in his name, by the way, Seth Cashel, the first result is a USA Today article fact checking it. Elections expert Seth Keschel releases national fraud numbers, finds 8.1 million excess votes in the U.S. election, affirms Trump won everything everywhere. Um, fact check. Let's see. Trump didn't win any of the states. Keschel did. Election experts say Keschel's analysis is bogus and other independent fact checking organizations have debunked it. Isn't it crazy how you can just make shit up and every and like every the burden of proof is now on everyone else to debunk it? Like. A Trump official could just go out there and say, actually, not a single human being voted for Joe Biden. Literally everyone voted for Trump, and it was done by Stalin. I don't know. Stalin did it. And then all the fact checkers and every news organization around the country have to go, and they have to write an article. <clears throat> they have to write an article to, and, no, and, and the Republicans don't read the article. They never read that article, so they believe it. Not a single Joe Biden voter. And his estimate what? is conservative. He considered it very conservative. And I believe he said he didn't even go to the machines. This is without even looking at the machines. Remember, I'm not the one trying to undermine American democracy. I am the one trying to save American Oof. democracy. Love me them fascism tenants. I love it. Hit me with them. Hey, guys. Uh The numbers speak for themselves. We got 12 million more votes than in 2016. I was told we're all trying to find the guy the best in the who's world. undermining our Real democracy. Pulses, not the phony pollsters that are used by certain of the fake news media. If I got 1 million more votes, I couldn't lose. I got 12 million more votes and we lost. You know, Obama the second time got millions fewer votes than he did the first time he won. But I was told by the most talented pollsters, and polling is talent. Polling works, but not when it's fraudulent polling. Get one million votes, sir. You cannot lose. It'll be an easy early evening. We got 12 million votes, and they said we lost, and we didn't. We won 18 out of 19 bellwether counties, which is unprecedented. We flipped 15 House seats. Remember, we were going to lose 25 to 35 House seats instead of losing. How long do you think we're going to have to deal with this? Like, I know it's going to be in 2024, but how many decades do you think it's going to be before Republicans can lose without saying it was a big, a big meme? Like, I wonder if this is just going to be a literal permanent fixture of the party until the party dissolves. You know, I don't know what I don't know what circumstances would ever lead yeah, th yeah, this is the new founding myth. Yeah, I, I, le I legitimately believe that about a third of the country is now incapable of believing that they've lost.
the presidential election. Like they, they're not capable of actually believing it. Um, which means that our democracy basically can't work. Democracy's strength resides in the strength of the belief in it. Uh, more so than anything else, so. 25 or 35, we won 15. It was a big evening. And you know why? Because they came in on our coattails. That's what happened. The congressman will tell you that, and women, they will tell you that. And did not lose a single Republican incumbent in Congress. Think of that. For the first time, congressman, we never think of that. This was in decades and decades. We didn't lose one seat. You know why? I hate to say it. Because of me. It's because of me. He hates to say it. He hates to and praise despite himself. despite the pandemic, 56%, this was a record of Americans. This is during the pandemic. Believe that they- Okay, so we got the immigration block, and now we're on the actually guys they totally won block. Now, if we move ahead. China. We built the greatest economy in the history of the world, and then we did it again. We had to do it twice. And now it's being destroyed, rapidly destroyed by what they're doing with inflation and other things. No, we, we completely rebuilt part. the United States military. We created Space Force and we selected Huntsville, Alabama as the new headquarters of the U.S. Space Command. <laughs> Uh, I made a lot of enemies. I made so many and a lot of- Oh my God. ...and entrenched interests that anyone can even imagine. Uh, I can't do it anymore. Past a certain point, every Trump speech sort of bleeds and melts into the same kind of primordial miasma that Trump pulls his talking points from. I think we're- I, you can watch the whole thing if you want, but past a certain point, I mean, if he repeats, I have to repeat, so on and so on. Um, yeah, anyway, I mean, all jokes aside, he is a fascist. The people who support him support fascism, which, whether or not that makes them unwitting fascists, or in some cases, witting fascists, is up to your personal moral philosophy, but it's definitely not good. And, yeah, America will literally not survive their power. Anything and everything must be done to ensure their political irrelevance.